is, um, it's always difficult doing a bit of a summing up when you're not quite sure exactly who's, who's actually, uh, well, who's doing the pre presentations, but what their presentations are going to be. Um, so we had a broad picture today of uh, trying to give us uh, you know, a 30,000 view and bring us back down to earth of how, well, so what, as the scientists always tell me when you actually come up with an idea for a research project. Um, well, so what for uh, um, you know, all the challenges that we've got, or all the opportunities that we should be looking for. So really we're looking at embracing change and managing disruption. Uh, disruption is a good thing, um, it's not a bad thing. Um, as long as it's managed. Um, so really we're looking at you know, overcoming technological barriers. Um, um, you know, that can be quite simple, uh, using weight rates. I mean, uh, it would be tremendous if uh, the 2,300 breeders that uh, produce the 55,000 birth notifications every year gave us a birth weight, an eight week weight, and uh, 18 to 20 week weight. That would be massively powerful. And it just, yeah, the, that, you need to use some technology for that. It's called a weight rate. You'd be surprised how many commercial producers and breeders don't do that. So uh, if, you haven't, if you're one of those, if you can start doing that for us, that'd be tremendous. So society's been extremely successful with integrating science and technology in, in, in what we see as a people business. Um, I don't really work for the sheep industry. I work for the, a society of people and trying to keep that community together with obviously a clear focus on you know, developing a breed. Um, the society has been innovative, um, and it's the Texel breeders that we're supporting to, to, to remain innovative. And obviously to do that we need to look at technology and to support uh, the adoption and the testing of that new technology going forward. So if it was really simple that everyone could engage in technology all the while, then they'd be doing it, surely. Um, uh, well, only if they saw the value of it. So why isn't everyone CT scanning? Because not everyone sees the, sees the value of CT scanning and uh, they probably just look at the cost of it um, rather than actually the benefits of it. Um, why, why, why don't we have 100% uh, um, of our members engaged in performance recording? Because they don't see the value of it. Um, I was talking to uh, Angela earlier and uh, you know, commercial producers should get performance for free. Um, so really are we focused as a breed society on engaging with our consumers and your customers? Yes we are, but we're more interested in you and making sure that you've got the tools and you, uh, you've got the understanding on how to use those tools, interpret those tools, or to interpret the information from those tools. And that's what our clear focus is. That's where we feel we can you know, give some benefit, add some value. Um, so yes, it's important that we engage with AHDB and QMS and help them promote the benefits of using performance recorded animals to the wider industry. But I can assure you, HDB has a damn sight bigger budget to deal with than I do. So we'll focus on you guys, if you don't mind. Um, so, need a value proposition. Um, with any technology, you've got complexity and expense, uh, and they're seen as barriers for uptake. Um, so you need organizations like Texel Society, levy boards, government to support the uh, creation or the adoption, uh, early adopters of uh, those uh, new systems, technology, until you reach a tipping point, until that value is understood. Um, so if we look at technology in Texel breed, you know, we estimate there's over 1.5 million pounds of private funds from Texel breeders alone that's invested in uh, artificial insemination and embryo transfer in the Texel breed. That's a huge figure, absolutely huge. And they, they see the value of that. Um, so why don't, why don't they all see the value of performance recording by buying a 500 quid way crate? Um, you know, having a, a convenient way to capture that data and feed it into evaluations, but then use the information that we get from evaluations. So there's a barrier there, and we, we, we're really going to position ourselves to, to help bring down that barrier to get more breeders engaging in, in that particular technology. That's our responsibility. That's going to help drive genetic improvement in the total breed. So we do that by collaborative relationships and um, we're also uh, um, trying to set up new systems like the phenotyping farms that you've um, heard about earlier. So it is about adding value, it requires innovation, um, it, it, it requires a relevance and affordability to be acceptable. Um, going, going forward it will undoubtedly require collection and storage and Paul's touched on data as has uh, many of the, the, the scientists that have uh, presented earlier. And it also requires a degree of sharing. 
and ident identifying the value in that sharing, um, and transforming data into information. Data alone isn't that, that you know, it's useful, but it, you don't understand data, you understand the analysis, the information that comes from it. So it's making sure that's clearly communicated. Um, and why do we want to do that? Because we want to actually allow breeders to make the right breeding decisions and ultimately provide genetic improvement in those uh, commercially relevant traits. Um, our breed could be substituted by other breeds or other genetics as easily as we sub substituted others. So it's about keeping focused on what the customer wants, what their requirements are, and ultimately what the consumer's wanting as well. So managing the science, reducing the risks in, in adopting that science, change is inevit inevitable. Um, you see it in your, in your life all the while, in your everyday life. Um, I definitely, with a 16-year-old daughter and a 19-year-old son, keeping up with them is quite a challenge. But, uh, so I have to change, and uh, we have to change as an organisation, and we have to evolve with our market and with the, uh, the requirements that that market sets. So R&D continues to help us to pioneer new procedures. It creates as many challenges as it does opportunities, but um, I'm a firm believer good managers surround themselves um, with the right people to, to, to begin to manage those challenges and manage those pro problems, but identify the opportunities. And from a society point of view, I know that we've got a great team and we've got a great partnership with uh, like-minded organisations like uh, SIUC, CL, and uh, support from Innovate UK. Um, so providing the grants, uh, the grants that we've, I suppose, we've had the initiative to position ourselves to gain, and these aren't grants that are 100% funded, they still require risk and uh, investment by, by, by ourselves, but it helps us to reduce risk of the overhaul because we're not 100% we're not engaged in trying to develop these, these new technologies. Uh, we're having some of the financial risk uh, removed through, through the Innovate UK support. Uh, and that's enabling us to explore and something Mike mentioned earlier, you know, it is about accelerating. We're good at what we do, but we want to be faster in doing it. Um, so again, we may not be able to do that alone. So partnership collaboration is important to, to achieve that. Um, and, you know, the, the, the importance is it, engaging with likes of uh, um, Innovate UK, which is one part of the grant funding projects, um, Horizon 2020, which is a EU grant or just self-funding some, some, some initiatives. It allows the society to build awareness of these emergency, emerging technologies. So um, that's very important. So we have a new wave of innovation, new technologies, new science, um, new thinking. Um, most importantly, uh, the role of genetics and uh, the adoption of uh, uh, the recent advances in genetic management um, will be critical in this process. But what's more critical is actually making sure that people want to eat lamb. Um, over lunch, I was talking to Joe Connington, and I said, well, we could you know, double, treble the growth rate of Texels, but if nobody's actually eating sheep meat, what's the point? So I think we need a viable industry, and that's most important, and there's a shared responsibility in, in creating that. Um, we can look at all the challenges of Brexit that Steve um, spoke to us about, but the biggest, the biggest effect on the UK industry is uh, um, labour. Um, or, or exchange rate. So if you've actually got a weak economy and a weak exchange rate, livestock tends to be pretty good, but then uh, we get less labour available to uh, be, of, uh, be, be of interest to be in the uh, red meat processing plants. So it, is, uh, it isn't all about the volatility of Brexit, it is that uh, exchange rate which has, uh, you know, uh, near, near enough, a, you know, it can turn the industry upside down within, within a day um, and you go from a viable trading prices to uh, um, you know very low and uh, depression in the industry you know the uh, referendum on uh, on brexit alone uh, around the royal highland show we were actually in a fairly depressed state in in prices um, uh, and then with it within two or three days the uh, the pound had dropped in value and uh, sheep prices were pretty good and everyone was pretty happy so, uh, you know, there is a great, great deal of volatility that's out of our control, but, but what you can do is actually manage what is in your control and uh, focus on using the tools which are going to be most relevant to enable you to be more productive. So, we're, we're, we're focused on delivering added value services. We feel that our breed adds a lot of value. 
Uh, we want to maintain core services. We want to increase activity in areas of promotion. We want to accelerate data collection from Texel Flocks and also provide improved analysis for reporting to our membership, interpret that information that ultimately you're going to make the decisions on. We don't make the decisions, you make them, but we can help provide the, informa the information and the tools to do so. Embrace and har harness emerging genomic technologies, or any technologies can uh, come, come to think. And invest in core areas of service delivery while seeking grant support if available. It's not easy getting grants. Uh, but we work hard and we've been pretty successful over the last three or four years in achieving that and we'll continue to work hard to continue that. And, um, and I think the important thing here is you know, collaborate with strategic partners. Uh, but that doesn't mean we want to be caring and sharing with everybody and work with everybody because we're not able to do so. So we'll make, make sure that we're working with those that can work with us that, and we can work with them to get you know, double the benefit, treble the benefit of working alone. So from next year, you, you've talked, um, um, SOUC talked about some of the new breeding values that are coming out. Um, combined, Signet are producing their new combined breed evaluations and launching that from April next year. Uh, we are part of that. And uh, you have commercial data being fed into the com combined breed evaluations uh, through Ram Compare, but also we're, we're collecting a significant amount of commercial data as well. And we'll be, uh, collaborating with our strategic partners to ensure that that feeds into our evaluations as well. Um, and then through through the new service, uh, which is Texel Plus, uh, it's all about adding value. We'll be looking at those other um, phenotypes that we've been collecting for foot rot, um, mastitis, setting new breeding goals, developing new breeding values, looking at the CT breeding values, um, and then um, issuing those as individual conventional estimated breeding values. Uh, and then later, later next year, um, rolling out our genomic technology. And uh, essentially, you, you don't really have to worry about that. It just basically means behind the scenes, genomics is playing a part and improving accuracy and improving the, I suppose, the hit rate of some of those hard to measure <coughs> phenotypes that are coming out through those specific breeding <coughs> values. So we're not trying to add complexity. We're actually trying to simplify the delivery of that service and uh, increase the uptake of the data that's uh, needed uh, in those commercially relevant traits. Um, so it is about collaboration. So, so yes, we'll be delivering the service through, through Texel Plus, but we'll also make sure that we are collaborating with Signet to ensure that we get the, the, the national standard benefit and adding the extra investment and the extra value that we're uh, going to get out of the additional phenotyping that we're, we're, we're doing alone and funding, funding ourselves. Um, so we'll also be influencing uh, the sourcing of RAMs for RAM Compare, um, as well as our own, in our own central progeny tests that we're, we're carrying out with the VIA project, uh, and uh, um, also working with uh, Nicola and the team uh, with regards to CT scanning and seeing what new, new traits are going to be coming through there. So it is pretty exciting times. So just to sum up before Mark... Um, tells me I'm uh, way over my time, but being last, I probably have a privilege that I can run over a little bit. So technology is evolving very rapidly, um, presents a challenge, but let's look at this as an opportunity. Um, we don't want to start from uh, a flat-footed situation. I think uh, you know if we're already rolling, we're already moving, it's easy for us to actually uh, manoeuvre to, to make the most of these new opportunities that are coming up, that others are seeing maybe as major challenges. Uh, genetic technologies are very powerful. That's proven uh, time and time again, the world over. The cumulative, the cumulative benefits are, are clear. Um, and yeah, that requires investment, that requires management of risk, and that requires good interpretation and good communication. So we'll be capturing more data, um, hopefully more effectively by investing in a database. Uh, engaging in work groups to ensure how we develop that particular database interface and uh, most importantly we were working with the genes and the evaluation team to work out how we can best translate that data into breeding information that you're going to make decisions on um, and I say you know we're, we're, we're not going to be making the decisions for you we'll hopefully be um, supporting the decisions that you make and providing the services that you you're going to require and yes some talk about sheep genomics as being an opportunity. I can assure you it has been extremely challenging to get where we are today. 
I started talking to Mike Coffey back in 2008, 2009 of how we can engage, it, engage with that. We had Nora McHugh here earlier um, showing how they're spending the millions of pounds of uh, Irish taxpayers' money and they're, they're, they're doing a great job of, of, of achieving that and offering value into the Irish industry. And we've collaborated very closely with them um, for the last 10 years um, and they're definitely ahead of the game from, from an industry level. Um, we're also engaging with the DEFA scoping study, um, so there may be uh, uh, new funding mechanisms that are coming through there as well. So it is about sharing, it is about um, caring for members, supporting members, um, and it's about collaborating with those that we're able to do so to, to achieve the best aims. And uh, ultimately, the main objective is to support you, the membership. So I'd just like to finish with a, you know, it's, uh, it's not really acknowledgements, but just to tell you who we, who we are working with, you know, ABP, CL, SIUC, um, AHDB and Abacus Bio, you know, that's, um, you know, the, the team that we surround ourselves with, um, help us to uh, uh, make the best decisions. They don't make decisions for us, but they definitely support us in trying to set the right uh, strategy and uh, put our... Um, fairly finite resources into uh, into the right places to best effect, and uh, yeah, again, Innovate UK have been very very helpful um, in the last couple of years with that. So thanks very much.